Welcome to the February 2nd uh, meeting of the Cape Cod Regional Government Assembly of Delegates. Um, call this meeting to order and we will begin as usual with a moment of silence to honor our troops who have died in service to our country and all those serving our country in the armed forces. Thank you, and now we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. The Assembly will now convene and will begin with the discussion of Proposed Ordinance 10-24, Amendment of the Regional Policy Plan per Section 8H of Chapter 716 of the Acts of 1999 as amended. Um, we, the uh, Government Recs Committee, had a public hearing on this at 3 o'clock today. Uh, we received testimony from members of the Commission um, staff and uh, at the end um, a recommendation to approve Ordinance 10-04 was voted on um, unanimously by the Government Regs Committee. Um, did you want to give a brief uh, overview of this? To the, you've all received in your packet um, copies, perhaps not redlined, and I know there was some confusion among the members of the Assembly, uh, but 10-24 is pretty much minor linguistic uh, and technical corrections to the language of the original uh, act. So uh, did you want to Sure, for the on record, Sharon Rooney, Chief Planner, um, I, don't, I don't know if you want me to go through each individual change, but basically oh, there right. were... We got, we got to... We got to re, I, <laughs> that's, I was just surprised sorry, you I, I shouldn't have... You confused me by going up there, but I have to, we have to recognize you. For, so I want to... Let's have a discussion first, and if, if we need you, you're there, okay? Um, so, is there any, any discussion on this? Have you had a chance to, uh, Leo? Um, I was um, able to attend the public hearing, which was, uh, which was held today, too, so I got a lot of information at that. I don't really have any questions specifically to the ordinance. Um, uh, the only thing that I would ask, and, um, and because there are members of the Cape Cod Commission here, and I think the gentleman from uh, Dennis is still here, that when something like this comes before us again, it may be helpful to include uh, the neighboring town uh, map um, if they in fact have one. Because I notice uh, in this particular town, a dentist one, uh, the areas that they are considering for light industrial, um, I know the town of Howitch abuts that area and certainly I know the town of Howitch has a number of light industrial build, build businesses there. Uh, obviously what we're trying to do is end up with a map across the whole Cape so um, it, it, I don't think it would impact our decision, but for informational purposes, it may just be able to help. So I, I would just just put that out there as a, uh, a request, maybe in the future. Yeah, we can have uh, that as a, have that information available when we have these maps come yeah, before us. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else on this? Um, it's pretty straightforward. If not, um, there's no further questions. I'll take a vote on this. You want to? Well, we need. A, yeah, I guess we need a motion. Well, I, my motion was the motion to approve, but uh, we oh, all right. I'll second. moved and second. Richard Anderson. Yes. Cheryl Andrews. Yes. Ronald Bergstrom. Yes. Leo Kakunis. Yes. Christopher Kanega. Yes. James Killian. Yes. Marsha King. Yes. Thomas Lynch. Yes. Teresa Martin. Yes. Deborah McCutcheon. Spiro Mitrakostas. Yes. John Oman. Yes. Paul Pilcher. Yes. Anthony Scalise, yes. Julia Taylor. Yes. Mr. Speaker, Ordinance 10-24 passes with 99.6% of the vote. Thank you. Um, the next Ordinance 10-25 had to do with the uh, Dennis um, Regional uh, Land Use Vision Map, um, the inclusion of some areas requested by the Town of Dennis. I don't know if many of you had a chance to, to uh, witness the public hearing. Uh, You've also had copies of that um, included in your packet. Um, so, um, is there any questions on that? Does anybody understand what's going on? Uh, Just a point of clarification: you forgot the town of Bourne, north of the canal. Yeah. Well, I was. We voted on it in separately. I guess we're going to have to yeah, vote we'll the. We're going to have to vote the entire right. ordinance. So yeah. you're right. Also yeah. included was the. Uh, it gets a little confusing. They threw Dennis and Bourne in there at the same time, but. Um, also included was a, a, a land use vision map for the area northeast of the canal, so it would be on the other side of the canal. Um, similar similar uh, village centers and economic uh, development areas. It's 
so. I'd move that as uh, submitted and Okay. Recommended. It's been moved. Second. Moved and seconded. No further questions? Call, of, call the, uh, the vote. Richard Anderson? Yes. Cheryl Andrews? Yes. Ron Bergstrom? Yes. Leo Kakunas? Yes. Christopher Kanega? Yes. James Killian? Yes. Marsha King? Yes. Thomas Lynch? Yes. Teresa Martin? Yes. Deborah McCutcheon? Spiro Mitrakostas? Yes. John Oman? Yes. Paul Pilcher? Yes. Anthony Scalise? Yes. Julia Taylor? Yes. Mr. Speaker, proposed ordinance 10-25 passes with 99.6% okay, of the vote. The commission's doing well today for a change. Um, the next item on your agenda I threw on there because um, before I realized we were going to have that general discussion on Saturday, um, as I said to the commissioners, the members of the Charter Review Committee and the chairman um, in his closing remarks and his report to the assembly recommended that the, the a, a Charter Review Committee in some form have an ongoing role in, in looking at the processes of county government. And, um, and it came, came very timely because we had this meeting Saturday and sure enough the same suggestion was made. So I'm just throwing it out to the delegates. Um, I had a brief discussion with Bill Doherty on um, on the makeup of the committee, and it, it runs along familiar lines. Should it be an internal committee with people who are intimately, uh, you know, involved in the process of government, or should it be like most charter review committees, totally separate from those who are being reviewed? And for instance, in our town of Chatham, we appointed a committee, and no nobody who served in the town government was on that committee. So I'll throw that out, and Marcia, you can plunge right in. Mr. Speaker, I guess I'm, conf I'm, I'm concerned and confused why we're changing the rules. We do a charter committee every five years. I, I kind of feel that the business roundtable is, is, is kind of pushing this to, to have some sort of agenda. And, and maybe I, I don't mean to be conspiratorial, but we do it every five years. Why, why would we continue it? And, and I guess I'm just a little confused about all that and I don't know why, why we would do it. I understand the discussion and I think it's fabulous to continue the discussion about county government in general and, and I'm thrilled when I did hear that there was 50 to 100 and some odd people at this meeting. Um, well, I, I heard about 60, so I'm going to go between 50 and 100 and so. Um, right, but regardless, I, I think it's wonderful, but I'm not sure why all of a sudden we're, we're being asked to continue this the charter review, when we do it every five years, it's the way it's been, and I just think that, that other people seem to be pushing us to do this, and they may have an agenda, uh, and I, I, I would not be in favor of, of continuing the, the, the committee. I think that in five years, we'll appoint another one, and we'll do another charter review. Okay. Leo? Thank you. Uh, I'm going to kind of separate the issues into two issues, if I may. Um, the issue about continuing the Charter Review Committee, um, having been on that committee, I, I will tell you I, I voted to do that because um, after learning and seeing the time constraints that comes forward, uh, having to prepare documents and any changes, bring them forth to the entire assembly to vote on them, and then in fact have them prepared for a November election. If I remember my dates correctly, most of the stuff has to be voted on by this committee by a, by a date in June so that it can in fact be published for the following uh, uh, November election. Uh, from what I understand, the previous um, uh, Charter Review Committee got tangled up in some date issues and there were some things that were never actually voted. So um, when, when I was involved in it, I found that we got kind of um, uh, I don't know, bogged down, if you will, with some discussions, and uh, it seemed that the committee said, finally, you know what, let's focus on a few things, have those meet the timeline agendas, that's the, that's the document that we brought forth, or suggested to bring forth to this uh, body, this body voted it, and then it, in fact, did get, um, it did get approved in November. I feel there are many issues that were still on the table that we were discussing as a committee that we haven't um, closed the door on yet. Uh, so as far as continuing the committee, I would vote for it. I would encourage us to talk more about it. I think it, it would only be a uh, positive action. Now the other flip of the coin or the other part of this discussion is to change how that actually works. 
And, you know, I, I, I'll tell you, having lived through it once, um, I don't have a problem with how it works. I think that the committee, if it's made up of members of, of, uh, of the assembly, as there is, a couple of people at large from the community, um, a member of the uh, county commissioners or their appointee, um, they can always hold public hearings to in fact get inputs from groups such as the Round Table, uh, the Women's League, uh, any other group that wants to meet on their own and come up with a white page, if you will, of suggestions for that the committee to look at. Uh, the reason why I think that's kind of a, a better way of doing it is because I look at it logically and realize that any changes that are going to be made uh, are going to eventually have to come in front of this whole body anyhow for their support and vote and then in fact again go out to the general public in the November election. So on the two points, I would like to see the committee continued and I would like to see it continued as it is presently in the Charter. Certainly that might be something that the new committee could look at changing, but uh, I, I think that um, I would like to see, again, it continue its work. Yeah. Um, Julia? I've been on a lot of charter reviews, and I think one problem is if you have the people who are involved, they have a preconceived notions, but then the time spent educating the, and that's a problem to some extent, but then the time spent educating the people who really are good-hearted and interested citizens but know nothing about county government is what often bogs things down. I do think that I have no objection to changing the structure of county government in the least. However, I think that it's got to be understood what is the reason that you would want to change the structure? What is the problem that, that the structure is, is causing? Is it that we have this horrible conflict between the uh, assembly and the commissioners and so therefore nothing gets done? That could be a structural problem. I personally don't see that in this case. Do we have a situation where every delegate is so representative of its his or her town that they never see the big regional picture and therefore you need to get rid of those delegates and move to a regional uh, elected people? Is that a problem? I don't personally see it, but maybe some people do. What I heard, what I saw from reading the Charter Review Committee minutes was a great deal of talk about the weighted vote. Well, this is just nonsense in my view to, to have that come up again because I don't think there's any way you can have every town represented and not have a weighted vote. So I, I just don't even, the idea that things couldn't progress, of course they couldn't progress at that review if that was what the the argument was about. So I think Rob O'Leary is right. There's a question of leadership. He was a fountain of new ideas, no question about it, when he was in the, in the county government. But the other thing is, is there a different problem? That, that's one issue. But the, uh, the real problem I would see is, we're a very small, limited funding in our funding. We have, well, what is our budget now? You know, it's nothing, 20 something. Okay, should that small amount of money be changed to provide some sort of bribe to the towns to regionalize? Or should we continue providing the services that we're now providing. I don't think with 25 million or less that we can do both. And I think there are people, probably uh, the people in the round table, I think Paul and Swiss feel that we really need to radically shift what the county does in to deal with the problems that we're facing. So if that's what people feel, then it is worth considering, once again, whether the structure 
is the answer to that kind of radical, if, if we need that kind of radical change, I still don't see that the structure is the problem. And I think we could have a, you could have the, Cape, the, the round table study the structure and come up with a, a new structure. We could have us study the structure and we could come up with a new structure. I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is, do we want a fundamental change in what the county does with its limited budget to provide certain very nice services, or do we really think we need a, a, a different approach which really regionalized things in a very different way, not this little piecemeal stuff. So okay. that's what I think. Okay. Cheryl? Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd, I'd like to add, hopefully briefly, yeah. to this conversation from a totally different angle. And that's because when the election happened in November, I wasn't on the assembly. And I hate admitting being ignorant, but the day of the election I most definitely was, and I consider myself reasonably well-read. I got a phone call from someone who had just voted and said, gee, I hope I voted correctly on those county questions because I didn't know anything about it. How was I supposed to vote? And I thought, oh, this is a little bit of an embarrassment. I've been running a campaign for weeks. I had no idea really what he was talking about because I hadn't seen the language. I had attempted to find the language. I had gone to the assembly website. I've read some of the minutes that Julia's talking about, but I couldn't see anything about what was going to be on the ballot. And there is a state system where you can put in your zip code and it will show you your ballot. I did that too. There was nothing about the county on that. There was, uh, out of deference to the Cape Cod Times, a very small article about housekeeping, maybe, I don't know, a couple of days before the election. Um, that means thousands of people voted on something. I dare us to ask them how many of them knew what they were voting on, but many of them didn't expect to see that question on their ballot as they walked in. For me, as a transparent government advocate, that scares the dickens out of me because if you, um, if you don't have a good system in place for educating the public before they walk in the ballot about this kind of stuff, how are they gonna trust us when we ask them something big? on the ballot. So I, I just want to share that experience with you, particularly the state uh, threw me for a loop and also the night of the election going to the Cape Cod Times website, not to pick on them, I love the paper, but none of the assembly election uh, votes were there either and I did complain to them about it because you've all shared in the brief time I've been you around, uh, around you the frustration uh, that you have with this issue and I can tell you, you're right, and we need some new ideas about solving it, and one of them is the press. But the state as well. The state prints those ballots. They are in charge of the elections. And so, I, like I said, it's a totally different angle on this conversation. But if indeed anyone thinks you sh we should continue with charter review, uh, right along with that, there needs to be a discussion about process and how you bring the public in. I don't even know if there were public hearings last year on any of this. So. Teresa? Thank you. Yeah. Like Leo, uh, no, several years, I too was on the Charter Review Committee, and I agree with Leo. I think that some form of something should continue forward. One of the discussions we had at the end was it felt like this was a very unfinished process. Um, and in general, that seems to be the cycle that Charter Review has been. You kind of set something up, scramble, scramble, do something, you miss the deadline, you don't. And real meaningful discussion doesn't have a place to happen. A series of input cycles from the public doesn't have a chance to happen. And the hope was that by having some kind of ongoing committee, call it, it doesn't need to be called Charter Review, it can be some other name, but some other cycle for looking at what we have, educating people what it is, and putting in an input cycle with the public seem to be a really important thing to do. Because I, I at least really feel that we didn't finish the process. We started something, we had a deadline, we did some house cleaning stuff that needed to be done and got it done. And we didn't have a chance to move the process the way it should have happened. So I, I agree with Leo that I am in favor of continuing some form of continued exploration of this. And I think the assembly should be in the lead in making it happen because I think that's well, one of the things that we should be doing. Okay. Paul? Uh, I wasn't on the Charter Review Committee, but I, I 
remember quite distinctly that when there were discussions coming from the Charter Review Committee, that one of the, th the most important points was exactly what Leo and Teresa have been saying, that they were rushed, that they were going to put in a few house cleaning items, and that essentially they were expecting and hoping to be given another life to continue the discussions that had been started. So I'm not sure whether we need to change county government or not, but I think it's important to have those discussions, to invite pu the public in, and to continue the process that was started last year. Yeah, we the, the the issue and and people have touched on it, the issue is that uh, you know some of the previous charter review um, committees haven't been successful for various reasons. I mean, it one got bottled up in the state house, and before that, it was issues. But the timing was very awkward. I'm I'm not trying to make excuses, but. The, the fact is, as, as um, the county clerk, uh, rather the clerk of the assembly reminded me at the time, assemblies go away, uh, committees go away on the first of, of uh, the, the last day of, of December. So in a way, I couldn't presume that even I would be the one to reappoint them. And I certainly can't, wasn't in a position to appoint a committee that had a life beyond the, the existence of the assembly. So that created a problem. We did spend a lot of time, get, a lot of time on, uh, and, and Charlotte, should be here too because she was involved in this. A lot of time, should we deal with the big issues first? Should we sit down and decide, are we going to maintain the existing structure of the assembly? Are we going to have the commission as regional? Or are they going to have them at large? Let's decide on those. But then we went back and forth where we should do that. And then we wound up going into the minutia of going over, as most charter review committees do, you go over the charter word by word and coming up, as you saw with some of the ordinances, with minor corrections of language and, and some major corrections. We had to do some housekeeping because there were things in included in the last charter review that were no longer relevant because of the of, of things that had happened in between so it was an awkward process um, once again I think I think the people involved did a good, good job I think nine I've always felt philosophically that nine people is too many you know in a committee and and that's another thing Julia do you want to add to that well I guess I just want to know what were the problems that the charter committee review committee identified with county government structure that would make you want to change it you know i i that I don't mind changing it. I'm all I. I wanted. I didn't want 15 people in the first place. If I went back to my old way, I would have preferred we had regional people. So that still is fine with me. But what were the problems that are can be addressed with a change to the charter. First, what are the problems? Then you can decide. And I never heard from seeing the minutes. Well, you know, all I can say. What uh, the problems? All were I can that, say is, is that, that is that. If you followed how town government has has uh, developed over the last 20 years, when I was first came to Chatham, the tree warden was elected. You know, the planning board was elected, and people. As, as much as they're interested, I know a lot. there's a lot of people you saw, sadly, a lot of people involved. People don't follow government. I mean, they know who the president is. They know who the senators are. They, they basically, when you get down to things, I guess the biggest complaint was that we didn't have the visibility in our communities that we should. And that if we consolidated, I'm not, I'm not saying I agreed with this, but this was the argument. Was the argument. If we consolidated the, the, the county government in the hands of, let's say, five commissioners, as, as, as we have town government and five selectmen, and made them responsible for just the elected official responsible for everything that went on as they are in town government, you'd know who they were, and, and they, would, they would be answerable. And, and just to... Oh, just but we have three consolidated people now, and... Most people don't <laughs> say it. <either>. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. E maybe people either know who they are or they don't know who they are. But it's well, unclear to me why more of them right. would. Before, uh, uh, before I get off the stage here, and I'll recognize Tom in a minute, is my, county government has grown. I mean, to me, we have. Now, the, the question that was given to us sadly is was 15 assembly delegates. Do you know who your assembly delegate are? Well, we have 15 members of the Wastewater Collaborative. Do you know who they are? We have 15 members of the Cape and, and, and Vineyard uh, Electric Collaborative. Do you know who they are? We have 15 members of, of the Cape Light Compact. Do you know who they are? I mean, they're, they're, we have all of these people. I would just as soon consolidate the whole mess into 
our responsibility to vote on, 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 on these things rather than have all these fiefdoms go, going around. I mean, they all do a great job, and I'm not criticizing them, but the, the, the tendency in government is to consolidate more authority and elected officials so you have so that we're answerable for what goes on in the government. That's, that's my speech. Anyway, Tom. Uh, I, I intend to, uh, or I, I, I feel I'm agreeing more with what Ju the route Julia is going. Get to define the problem. Just to recreate the Charter Commission and have them meet and then come up with something and then they're rushed or they come up with whatever the plan is that we haven't been talking about regularly, um, I, I think is a, a waste of their time and, and then and probably a waste of ours when, when, uh, when we get it. I think what we have to do, and what I heard loud and clear on, on uh, Saturday is we have to demonstrate our relevance. And whether that's through the budgetary process, a redevelopment of that budgetary process, um, as and, and some creative thinking around that, that process. I mean, you know, our town uses a lot of enterprise accounts. Are there places where the county could be an enterprise account? So we're not r using our valuable and, and precious tax dollars that come through. We're still providing the service, but we're getting the users of that service to pay for it. Are there ways of spinning certain programs we have now off into a nonprofit so that they might exist on their own? Very worthwhile uh, programs that perhaps should again maybe still be functioning, but maybe not come from our uh, tax dollars. And I think the leadership issue is a real key one. I mean, we've, I think towns have been saying up and down that they want to do something about wastewater, but the problem is the funding of it. Where are you going to get the money? Now, you're going to have 15 towns trying to raise all that money, as, as we have tried to in my town through a, uh, an override, set some money aside. Yarmouth is using a totally different uh, procedure. Of, they're going to have an override that puts it on every, the burden of every of the, the citizens that are, are, are involved. Um, we were going to do a 50-50, um, uh, you know, betterment match. Um, so I'd like to see the county grab that funding issue and if we've got to go to the state to get the taxing powers to do something, do it, move it. If we can't because of the structure, then maybe we need a commission to look at us and say, gee, we have all these problems, but we really can't address it because of the structure. I think we can address it based on the way we are um, you know, structured right now. So I'd rather see us focusing on trying to demonstrate that we can provide these regional issues in some some capacity. Um, Town of Barnesville does it for the entire uh, Cape uh, for weights and measures. We put it together. Now, would the town be welcome, would we welcome the county doing that? If they wanted to create that, you know, department and do that so that we weren't fostering that whole benefit and but had the same sort of weights and measure training going up and down, I'm sure we'd, with welcome arms. Because so one of the things that struck me about the forum was that I felt they were, some of the panelists um, were somewhat putting down our towns. You know, it was like the towns were part of the problem here, you know, and, and um, uh, you know, because we're parochial and, and, and I don't, you know, as, I don't get that sense from our town. You know, we're willing to participate as we are with, with Mashpee and Yarmouth and Sandwich on wastewater right now. They're on our, our Citizens Advisory Committee. There are lots of ways we want um, to participate. You gotta bring money to the table. You gotta, you know, show that, that you're gonna lead on an issue. And, and let's face it, if you're a community, DPW, schools, police, education, that's where the money is. If you're going to save the community money, if you're going to do something regionally, now are we going to tackle those issues? Or is our regional government going to be more, maybe we can do something assessing, maybe we can get you know, police coverage or dispatch coverage down in some of the smaller towns. Maybe that's the way it goes. And I think those are the things that you know, we can do within this structure. Let's see if we can do it within the structure. If we can't, then appoint a committee that says, geez, your charge is to find a structure that works. Yeah. I mean, the thing that bothers me about you know, going to seven politically, you know, Republican or Democrat, you, know, they were, you run um, as a Republican or Democrat, I think you're setting up a real uh, political you know, environment right there that we don't bring to that. We don't bring our, our Republican or Democrat agenda. So I would really hope that uh, you know, 
we use this form just like this to find out what each of us may think and tackle some of the problems here if we think we can give guidance to the commissioners or others. And, and as I say, look at the services we now do. I mean, I'll throw in another example. I don't mean to criticize someone, but um, the county has an affordable housing um, department. It's mandated through the Cape Cod Commission. Um, we have affordable housing issues come before our ZBA. Is the county standing there beside us trying to talk to neighbors who might not want it and demonstrating the public good? The county isn't there. When we had a wastewater debate and we had 300 people in the audience, we had the county sitting out there. Did one county person get up? Oh no. And that was a little controversial. And I think you've got to get up and show and, and, and demonstrate that we're relevant and, and, and here's why. And we're going to bring these resources to you, community, and help you out. Well, let me, let me ask you a question, Tom, because this is something I've given a great deal of thought to when setting up the committees. Um, you know, we've encouraged some of the committees, the subcommittees, to be more proactive rather than reactive. In other words, to especially the economic affairs, to look at things you can do. But traditionally, the budget process has been one of simply approving the, 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 the uh, commissioner's budgets and, and perhaps making a few minor changes. If the committees wanted to be proactive, they would do what the legislature does, which is simply, thank you very much for your budget, and, and here's what we think are our priorities, and, and, and submit, and you know, Bill's listening, submit an alternative budget saying, well, we're going to take se several you know, from line item over here, and we're going to put it to line item over there, because we feel that this is a, and, and I'm, you know, are you, you as a member of the Finance Committee, are you willing to do that? I mean, do you think that that's a, a road we could take with really, because the budgetary, the budgetary actions is really are, is where our authority lies. Because you want, you want to have these committees, if, these, if, the, if we can say, thank you very much, Mr. Commissioners, I hope you'll do this, or we can actually use the budget to try to push our priorities and look into things, in which case it'll kind of be a break from how things have gone in the past. I'm not against it, it's just... It's, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I think the one time we did that when we had a budget deficit and we were looking at alternatives, you know, it, it was there were several divided votes, you know, from the Assembly and, and we got a budget that was vetoed and, you know, there was a lot of, of um, back and forth uh, that way. Before... Um, I set up a confrontational budgetary process with yeah. the commissioners. No, no. I'd rather have one where, you know, if if we sat as a finance committee and said, gee, here, here's where I think we could create an enterprise account. Let's bring, you know, it's very late in this process, this budgetary process, I think, to do that. But, you know, you'd say, gee, when you're, when you're doing your FY13 budget, wherever, whatever would be up to, you know, um, can you look at that? And here's why, here's why we think that should happen that way. Um, so I wouldn't be opposed to um, the Finance Committee being much more aggressive uh, in that regard at all. Well, I'm thinking of all the committees in a sense that deal with it, but Teresa, did you have something? Yeah, I was just going to say this uh, discussion we're just having is exactly my point that we did not finish the process. We started it. Part of the process should be is something working or is it not? And we never really got to a meaningful discussion of that point. And so I think there needs to be a way for that discussion to continue in some form, and there needs to be a cycle that engages the public. The public was not engaged at all in the last cycle, and that really bothered me. And there are a million reasons why, and it doesn't matter, but that doesn't mean we just say, let's forget it for another five years. All right. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I mean, I broached this subject now for the reasons that I gave because the it was a rec because of first the recommendations of the previous charter review committee and it, it happened to correspond with the 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 um, forum that was held on Saturday. It's not something we have to decide now. I mean, the time frame uh, for a charter any charter change should we decide to go in that direction would be an, an election, which was not going to occur until November of 2012. So um, I'm perfectly willing to let this. Um, you know, be considered by the members of the assembly, get public input. We'll see if there's really a, as Julia said, is there really a you and cry from the public that we should somehow change our our, our, uh, our structure? And, and uh, I would also like to inform the members of the um, the tr previous charter review committee that I do not have the intention of reappointing them until I hear from this body that it is the will of uh, to do that. So, um, but I think I owe them that courtesy, Leo. I, I just go back again, uh, the previous speaker, everything that you guys talked about here since since I last spoke is the exact reasons why I, I think it should continue. I think there's a lot of unanswered questions and I think there's uh, uh, there are things that should be looked at in public input, 
I mean, uh, you know, we run kind of a, a uh, uh, an odd thing here. When we convene the assembly, we, we don't really uh, take testimony from the public. It's it's 5.30 in the afternoon. Many of us want to get out of here. Uh, the subcommittee uh, atmosphere is a little bit different. It, uh, it allows public to have some input. I don't see any bad thing coming out of it. Um, again, I think there's there's a lot of things that we, sh we, we left uh, undiscussed, and I would like to see us uh, go back and, and finish that. The only other thing I would like to add in regards to the young lady from Provincetown and her comments on the last, uh, the previous changes, um, like you, when I ran for this position, um, I was asked by many people in the town of Howard, what does the assembly delegates do? And my campaign platform was, I have no idea, <laughs> but once you elect me, I will, I will find out and I will tell you. <laughs> And quite frankly, I have held up to that part of my promise to the po people of Town of Howitch. I do, in fact, have a local Channel 18 show that I do, uh, which is called Assembly uh, uh, County Government 101. Um, as far as uh, the defending what happened for the educational part of the actual charter change, um, you know, we did lose our longtime clerk right at that very, very devastating time. We did have some uh, meetings scheduled, which were canceled. Um, I think it really fell on our individual shoulders as uh, representatives to our towns to do what, uh, what we should do, is in fact inform the people who have elected us what's going on here. Um, I did go in front of our Board of Selectmen a couple of, day, a couple of weeks prior to the November election, uh, made public the changes, uh, handed them out to our local newspaper, so um, I, I can't speak for the rest of the communities, but I will tell you the town of Howitch was certainly informed of the changes and, um, and voted accordingly. Uh, and I think that is an obligation that I would like to see the rest of the members continue to go down that road and explore even more, uh, doing local uh, uh, in informational uh, things either at uh, city councilor meetings or, or uh, 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 selectmen's meetings or if you have a local uh, TV access to let people know what's going on in the community. Uh, but again, to go back to what we're really talking about, the two matters before us, uh, I would like to see the uh, Charter Commission or Charter Group um, reappointed and I, I, I think that uh, the format that it was appointed under is fine at this time. Okay, Spiro? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, two things. First one's really simple. Can you please have the clerk forward to us the changes to the charter that were approved in the last election? Um, we have the charters, uh, at least the new members do, um, from prior to those changes, so I'd like to take a look at them and incorporate them in, uh, in my uh, folder. Um, I would like to have a discussion about the charter review. Um, listening to some of this discussion, it sounds like you ran out of time. So sooner rather than later, and let's take two years to, um, to have the discussion. Um, to some of the other members' concerns that you need to know why you're having the discussion first, I have a very specific problem with the charter. Uh, it goes to our uh, differential um, role as the assembly to the commissioners. Um, I've voiced that concern to the commissioners directly in the past. I think to the other delegates uh, concerned that um, we maintain our nonpartisan status is exactly the reason why we are invisible to the community and why we are differential to the commissioners. So I'd love to have the discussion about how we change that part of the charter to make this a partisan position to have more people actively engaged in, in attaining it. And then when you're here, similar to every other legislature that I can think of, um, we have partisan debate. Um, it, can't, it can't hurt, as far as I can see. But I'd love to have that discussion. I think you need to have a committee uh, reconstituted so we can have it, and let's take two years to do it. Dick, do you have a comment? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, in listening to all the discussions that have been going on, the one thing that seems to run through it all, from seems like all the speakers, is the time frame. Is that we, we, we ran out of time, we ran out of time, um, we didn't have, you know, so if we're going to take and appoint a charter review commission again, I would think that it would come at the end, at the end of this 
five, five year time frame or whatever it is, whatever it's supposed to be redone, five years, but a, appoint the people earlier in the time frame than they were appointed this, this time around. Mm -hmm. uh, and not to spend so much time on the minutiae little things like a, a comma after a word or you know whatever it was, it, it, and to get into the real meat of the chatter and discuss that, not whether it should be named the Cape Cod Regional Chamber Government or whatever, you know. <laughs> but you know, it, it, that was you know I don't know how yeah. much time was spent on that, but I bet you some time we, spent on that. We beat it to death, right? yes. I, no, no question so, about it. You know, where were the priorities? Were the priorities in the names or were the priorities in finding out what's wrong with the government structure as it is and how can we fix it instead of what's the name of it? Who cares what the name of it is when we got something that may not be working? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's uh, I, I. As far as we t we discussed very uh, quite a while just whether or not we should run uh, on a party ticket. You know, I think uh, that was the discussion. We went back and forth. We went back and forth on the name. Um, I think that Fred did uh, the chair. Um, he did, Fred Gector did a yeoman's job of trying to keep the members in line, but as happens too often, we rambled on, you know, and I'm probably one of the biggest offenders on some things that we never got resolved. So, um, you know, par and partially it was the time frame in a sense it was awkward that the session ended in, in uh, January 31st. So, well, I don't know. We seem to have a split decision. I mean, I'm, I, I'm with Leo and, and Teresa on this, but, uh, you know, I think we should, uh, we should invite them in and, and uh, get a report and see if we want to continue or not. But I'm willing to go with whatever the feelings of the uh, assembly are if you want to take a vote, that's fine with me. But uh, or we could just leave it the way it is. But I mean, we have a meeting coming up on the 16th that right now doesn't look like too much of a bear, right? Have we got anything coming up on the 16th? No. It, I mean, after that, we're going to be straight out with wind, wind farms and budgets and so on. So, um, for, uh, John. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. There's one more facet that was part of each of the last uh, budget review, um, I'm sorry, uh, charter reviews that I think we should bring up as well. Um, it, it seems that this pe recent past charter review committee wanted to get a lot of legal advice, which can tend to be very expensive. And I'm going to ask if the, you do reappoint a charter committee that it becomes part of the budget process and you decide whether or not you're going to uh, allow that budget, that uh, uh, regulatory uh, body to um, uh, to uh, hire a lawyer or use a lawyer that was could be very expensive for us. I mean, they were, they had some far-ranging ideas, and then they were going to be very expensive to pursue. So, if you're going to have a new charter review committee, I think that you have yeah. to incorporate some of that into a budget process yeah, because I, it's going to be expensive. My feeling is we have an attorney, which, you know, but. Uh, I don't know what his direct responsibilities are, but uh, it's, it's, you know that's a question. <laughs> I don't know uh, if he does either. Uh, yeah, yeah, Julia. I, I think you, when you get to the writing, it's very, and if you really are going to make major changes, you need you need a lawyer to do it for you. But I don't think you need a lawyer to decide what you want and 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 your general process. That that. I can't see hiring the lawyer until you've decided what you want. <laughs> Tell him what you want. Uh, Tony, no, just a minute. Sorry. I, I guess fairly quickly, um, as all of you know, I was not here for most of the last two years um, because of my sicknesses. But I've, I've heard Teresa and I've heard um, Leo talk about the problems. Uh, the biggest problem was that we didn't have enough time to finish with all the issues. I'm guessing that while I was not here, you guys discussed what those issues were that you did not have time to resolve. Is that true? No. So we're sitting here talking about a charter that was approved, even though there were many issues that were not approved or not, not discussed because we didn't have the time. So I guess. Before we do a whole lot, let's find out what uh, didn't get reviewed and throw that into the mix too. I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I figured that you guys would have talked about those things, but I guess you didn't. Well, anybody else, Teresa? Did you want to? Yeah, if I can, I can answer that really simply. When we first started looking, at it, it was clear there were kind of two sets of things. There was a lot of stuff in the charter that 
probably shouldn't have been there. There was leftover things from legislation that never happened. There were pages and pages of stuff that just was kind of cluttered and in the way. And anyone who looked at the charter found it very difficult to actually see what it really said amongst all the stuff. And simultaneously, some of the people in the committee felt there were things, they, substantive things they wanted to discuss, and the clock was ticking. And so the decision got made that we would get a clean version of the charter. That would be our first priority, because until you have a clean thing to look at, it's awfully hard to have any kind of meaningful discussion. So that's what ended up happening and there was no time to kind of do anything else. The issues didn't even get fully framed. There was just a lot of discussion of many of these different topics, but it never got to the point of even gelling enough where we could come forth and say A, B, C, and D are things that people would like to discuss because they're a higher priority. We never got to that point. And so that's why I feel we need in some form to continue or to start early because just the fact that there were question marks left unframed to me says we need to keep talking. Okay, Dick, do you have something to say? No, forget it. Okay. Uh, well, um, I Tony does. Tony, yeah. Uh, thank you, Teresa. That you know, they kind of give me a little bit of an explanation, but it would seem to me as for something as important as as that uh, the charter review was. Um, Maybe the format itself was not correct. Maybe there should have been a subcommittee to the child review so that you could have taken all the things that weren't discussed for quote unquote time because of time refrains, uh, restraints and had a separate group of people just working on those to bring those back to you guys. But um, if that's the issue was we just didn't have enough time, then we have to make the time so that we don't have these complaints again. Okay. Well, I mean, I could I could bring um, the the former chairman in and have him give a further explanation of where we left it. But of course, there's three of us here now: myself, and Teresa, and Leo. So I mean, it's no mystery. Um, uh, so, what is the pleasure of the assembly here? Are we going to continue or not? Uh, yes. Well, I don't know. I have to, I'd have to uh, suspend the rules. A lot of rules, Bill, to look, talk to you. But so. Okay. Okay, do we have a motion to suspend the rules to talk to so Bill? Moved. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Just That's <laughs> not overwhelming. <laughs> those opposed? Think about it. Opposed. opposed. No. Okay. No. okay. Just one thing. The whole idea is a Cartesian approach would work. If you know where you're going to go, you can build a map to get there. That seems to be the thing that you know that Julie's okay. brought up, that Teresa's you know mentioned, and then the the charter review sessions they went to seem to be missing. Thank so you. I think if you had that approach, quick before I rule you out of order. Okay, yeah. you can you can create if you know where you want to go, you can create a map to get there. The problem is you haven't decided where you want to go. So that's what you know what's going on with all of this. And this is about the let's see this would be the fourth charter review that has been my experience to observe during time, and it always ends up the same way. So. You're out of order, Bill. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I mean, one, one thing that we even talked about in quite length and, and didn't put to bed was, was the fact on how this charter review is only established every five years or recommended to be established only five years. And I think the discussions that were had today make it clear that I would like to, again, look at not having it established every five years. Maybe having an ongoing committee appointed every two years so that the public has a place to go when they have questions or interest. I don't know. It's things that need to be discussed. So I, I, I'm not prepared to make a motion today because I think everybody would like to think about it, but maybe, Mr. Chairman, if we could put it on our agenda for our next meeting and, and, and be, maybe be prepared to vote on it then. Um, I'd make that make as a suggestion. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, I could put it on the agenda. If it's, 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 but uh, if you don't want to, if you don't want to vote on putting it on the agenda, I could simply do uh, it. But yes, I, I sure. would be in favor of putting it on the agenda. But I would not want to have a generalized discussion such as we've had. I would like people to write down and then distribute to the membership the problems that they see. I mean, we have heard, Sparrow has said, he sees that he wants partisanship, but I want to, and, but I want him to write down what was the problem he saw that that would help improve. So I think if we each put down 
three or four things that we think are a problem and then suggest what might be some possible changes that might address that problem. We wouldn't have to actually debate them all and agree on them, but if we brought in those pieces of paper and exchanged them and we all took home 15 pieces of paper with what people saw as problems or said, I don't see problems that I can think of a charter change would make, yeah. I think that's that would be more productive than starting in on the damn the um, Darn. <laughs> the re-educating the public at a charter review, which included the public. I, it's not that I want to exclude them, but I think first we have to at least know what we think, since we theoretically know more about it at the moment. Then it's worth bringing the public in to to get their ideas about what's wrong and what might be bad. But written, written, that's the only way to go with something yeah. like this right well, now, I, agree. I well, think. Uh, just as one addition to that, I agree that this should be put up to the next meeting, but I also think uh, perhaps the clerk or the speaker could solicit uh, written opinions from other members of the Charter Review Committee. <coughs> I think there were some important we get them here, yeah. viewpoints that need to be read. I would also like to suggest, just for the for the sake of, of some resolution, that if we are to change, if we are to continue, if, if there are those among the Assembly who are wanted to continue in some form, that they actually can amend the current resolution. In other words, rather than just throw it out and say, well, I think we should do this, it would be better that they, they or who, if there's more than one, submit a, a resolution that would say, I think it should continue in this form. That way we'll have something to actually look at, possibly amend or vote, because it makes it easier then to, and, and, and we know exactly where we're headed. You know, and if they, you want to vote it down, say, no, I don't think we should do that, it's fine. But, you know, right, we, right now we have the existing ordinance, the existing time frame. If, if those who feel that they, it should continue, then let's get something Let's get something we can vote on. So that's, that's, are you happy with that? We'll talk about it next week. Okay. Um, any, yeah, um, up. For, for some of us who aren't as familiar as you are with all these ordinances and resolutions, um, because they're all ordered by date and not topic, would it be possible on this one topic to have a list of all the ordinances and resolutions that relate to it? Uh, otherwise, I don't know how we could write a well, can, there is there, there is the resolution that I know of that sets well, up the. Uh, if we could have we a can, list of any of the resolutions or ordinances or section of the charter, so that whatever we propose is consistent. We're Thank we you. Can, we can send that to you. Um, reports of the committees. Well, of course, the only committee that I would report to is the Government Regs Committee, um, and we have already discussed that when we um, voted on the ordinances. I don't think any of the other committees have met. Um, we have a report from the clerk. I don't have anything to report this time. Okay, do we have any other business to report for the Senate? Speaker? Yep. Do you want to go first? Okay. Um, we're going to be taking up the appointment of the clerk at the next meeting. Yes. Uh, I understand it has to be done by resolution. Um, and It's part of the, part of the organization. I think, yeah. well, I, I think very specifically you have to pass a resolution making the appointment, but my question is more technical than that. So if you get the first answer to the first question, could you answer the second, which is, don't we actually have to convene the assembly before we vote on the resolution? And in this agenda, when you still thought they were coming before us today, you had them in the public section as opposed to the assembly conven I, I, convention. We, what's that? We don't, we, the, the, the clerk, as far as anyone knows who's been here, except maybe Julia, has been part of the reorganization that takes place after January 1st. So it's not a resolution, it's, 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 it's internal, reorganization's internal assembly procedure. So it's, it's exempt for, even from a lot of other recommendations. So and it's, 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 also one, it's also one person, one vote on the clerk, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. That, that's, a, that's yet another clarification that one of the other delegates and I were seeking, a weighted vote or one-to-one. -one. But uh, I, will, I will submit to you the chapter and verse from the charter that requires a resolution, and you guys can do it. you see fit with it. You're talking about the clerk of the assembly. Okay, well, well, I'll look up and make sure we're doing it according to procedures, but... Um. Leo. Leo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, 
now that we are going to be looking at hiring a new clerk, uh, and I noticed that uh, on our agendas we always have reports of other committees. Um, I know coming from the Cape Cod Commission, we've had a practice there that the subcommittees, uh, in fact, voted their minutes and kept them on file. And I don't really remember that being a practice since I've been here. <laughs> And I'm wondering if um, now again we're, we're, we're going to be having a, a you know a new clerk coming in and maybe uh, uh, looking at things that that may not be a practice that we should in fact adopt because again for instance the the subcommittee meeting that you had um, uh, earlier today uh, and you made that committee came forward with a recommendation it, it was open to the public there were public comments. Um, those minutes should in fact be approved by that subcommittee and kept somewhere in case there's a question. Uh, I know we went through a lengthy one with the wind issue and I know we went through a lengthy one with the DCPC so um, I guess it's just a question of organization and, and hopefully it's a practice that we I don't know I think we should we should uh, follow uh, I'd be interested to hear the other members well, I, no, I agree with you, Leo. It's just it wasn't possible to do that. We also have, we, we tried to get to the minutes from previous uh, the government regs committee on the uh, DCPC, but unfortunately we couldn't get them. The job of the committee to, as soon as it convenes, there, or, or needs to approve the minutes of the last meeting, and I'll do what I can, you know, to see that that happens. Now, you're right about that. Maybe just as a suggestion, then you may want to consider adding to our agenda, as opposed to uh, reports from subcommittees, uh, approval of previous meetings of subcommittee. That way, there it kind of uh, lets the chair know of that subcommittee that they're going to be able to say, okay, such and such, they're all here now, and, and uh, they have a chance to review the minutes and approve them at that time. Just again, just a suggestion. Okay. Anything else? Hearing nothing. Motion to adjourn. Second. Move and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Hey, Bill.